Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com. Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show on this Friday. We mm. are looking forward to what we hope will be a full card of Premiership fixtures, barring, of course, any weather that uh, is suspected to blow in over the next 24 hours. But we'll preview it as if it's getting the go-ahead in the company of Alan Ruff and Barry Ferguson. We're looking ahead to, well, a, a title race that looks as if it's nearly over um, any other slip-ups now and I think uh, Celtic could be in the box seat um, but there are other issues to debate tonight Yeah, lots to discuss. Uh, of course, uh, the weather has put paid to the Highland Derby uh, tonight because uh, snow is expected and quite a fair bit of it as well. Whether it'll have any impact on the Premiership matches, only time will tell. Uh, OK, to the main headlines. Of course, uh, there's wild speculation <coughs> at the moment that Lee Congerton, uh, the man who tries to pick future stars for Celtic, will be on his way to join Brendan Rodgers so soon after uh, the Celtic boss decided to leave for the Premier League. If that happens, possibly. Possibly John Park's name has been mentioned with a possible return to Celtic Park. This is what Neil Lennon had to say about it today. It's a hypothetical question, and I, you know I can't answer that because Lee is here. You know, and I'm working with Lee, and it's business as usual. I know there's a lot of speculation surrounding Lee, but like I said, we had a meeting, you know, a week ten days ago, and he was full on. So it's a case of maybe watching this space. Uh, if if he does move on, then I'm sure there'll be a lot of candidates. The club have a mind to take over if he does move on. I read the article uh, today, the interview with John Park. He was uh, very gracious. It's not all about him actually finding the players, uh, wherever they're playing. Virgil van Dijk uh, is one that springs to mind. Um, but he has mentioned that for every Virgil van Dijk, there's two or three others that don't cut it. Um, but he had quite a good success rate of big players that went on for double figures, Ruffy. Yeah, he certainly did. And I think that was the the be-all, you know, having that add-on clause, you know, that because uh, every time somebody comes up here, we always say, oh, that's never enough when the money they're spending down in England but if you get that clause in there that uh, when they do move on to a bigger club you get uh, a fair whack of that and that's what Celtic have been doing so I mean if he does move it seems a, an automatic choice Yeah, uh, Dundee against Celtic on the Sunday Celtic as you would expect are uh, red hot favourites to win at Dens Park uh, and of course uh, Neil Lennon himself has mentioned the fact that despite that draw against Aberdeen he's looking for the players to show the intensity to get the three points in the bag Well it's a game that you know we, we will be going out to win and just you know taking off another game but what I'm looking for is a intensity to our play and a bit more aggression in the final third. You know, defensively we've been excellent since the turn of the year, so I'm looking for more um more pace and more aggression in the way we play. Okay, that's Dundee against Celtic. I can't see anything other than Celtic winning that unless you're going to tell me different guys. No, I think Celtic uh, will have far too much quality. Um, for Dundee on the day so I'm going Celtic to win convincingly Yeah um, What do you make of your old mate uh, Chris Boyd? Uh, Chris is a pundit and a player as well it's a kind of a difficult balancing act at times there's been a couple of times in the season when he's fallen foul of <coughs> maybe not being able to get that right balance uh, Stephen Gerrard uh, had a real pop today yep. and criticised him and says you know uh, nobody really listens uh, to Chris Boyd on that criticism of uh, Chris Allen. Uh, Mark Allen, I beg your pardon. I don't think Mark Allen will care too much about what Chris has said because, first and foremost, he's identified him as the head of recruitment and that's not his role. Mark Allen is the technical director of the football club and has done an incredible job since he walked through the door. Since he's come in, a lot of changes have been needed in the team, in the squad, in the staff, at Ibrox and at the training ground. He's doing everything he can to improve things. If you look at where the club is now compared to uh, where it was when he walked in, he should be applauded for the job he's done. So I don't think Mark will be too worried about what other people think of him. Yeah, well, listen, Boyd has got his own opinion and he's, he's got every right. Um, but Boyd is also still playing 
um, the game. But look, Boyd is his own man. Boyd has got his, as I said, his own ideas and, and what to say, and that's up to him. Um, regarding Stephen Gerrard and Mark Allen, obviously Gerrard says that he's, he's happy enough with Mark Allen. Um, but for me, I, I think the man that's at the helm just now, Stephen Gerrard, is the right man to take Rangers forward. I know it's been a difficult week, um, but it doesn't happen overnight. <coughs> he's had to do a full a full rebuild. He brought a lot of players in in the summer, and he's obviously identifying now who is the players to take him forward now. And it's a big summer. It's a big summer in terms of getting the right players in, because um, now he's seen these players play up here, seen them when it comes to like pressurised games. And now his key is to go and get players that can handle that pressure. Yep, OK. Uh, it doesn't get any easier. It's Rangers against Kilmarnock. It's a game at home, Ruffy, uh, where <coughs> I fell foul of the feeling that if you're at home uh, and you're this Rangers side and you're sitting second in the table, you should easily have enough in reserve to defeat Aberdeen. That wasn't the case. Mm -hmm. Will Kilmarnock cause them problems? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think Barry will know more than me in this one. This, this is a game if you're... Uh, a Rangers player and you've just been knocked out of the cup this is a game that you need to be motivated for you need to go out there and show the players that that was possibly one of the night. Uh, sorry the fans one of these nights or the chances never happened and never so you've got to go out there roll up your sleeves and give them a show and it has to be a win Yeah. Any surprise Barry that Morelos' yellow card was rejected the appeal? Uh, I was surprised it got rejected I I've seen them given the penalties, like, uh, I'm not saying it was a clear cut, but there was a slight pull on them. Um, I'm sure Rangers will be disappointed. But going back to the game, this is now this is a pressure game for these Rangers players because the fans, if it doesn't start well, the fans will be on them. Yeah. So it's key that these players go out and show a response to what happened on Tuesday. And I'm sure Stephen Gerrard will know need to do a team talk. Yeah, I mean, Rangers are eight points ahead of Aberdeen. I don't see them uh, relinquishing second spot. That's the first thing. I do see them coming under a fair bit of pressure. Not not sacking, mm -hmm. but I do see them come under a fair bit of pressure if that game at Celtic Park does not go well for Rangers. I don't see them winning the league. I think it's gone. Yep. There's been too many slip-ups. But I, you know what it's like in Glasgow? Oh, you know, know. you I can. Know. Th they've resigned themselves to the fact there's no silverware coming in, but the Rangers fans won't tolerate, you know an inept mm. performance at Celtic Park. The, the key is now, it's got to be a strong finish to the end of the season. That, that is simple as that. They've got to try and win every single game now. Um, and they've got a massive game coming up at Celtic Park in a couple of weeks. But first and foremost, take care of tomorrow against Kilmarnock. Yeah, and the Rangers fans have got uh, responsibility to conduct themselves in an appropriate manner because Kilmarnock are coming back. Um, They've been at the centre of some uh, abusive language towards Steve Clark. Steve Clark reckons not only Rangers fans, but any supporters in Scottish football, uh, they should pay the ultimate penalty. I support everything that cleans up the image of the game. So whatever they have to do. Uh, I think the, the sentences, the, the punishments have to be severe. We have to send a big message, a strong message. And hopefully, eventually the message will get home. Actually, it depends on the the nature of what they do, whether that's harsh enough or not. Custodial sentences would be quite harsh, but would send a message. I've said before, it's not really my position. I think the people who make the laws and the people who enforce the laws have to do their job. If they do their job properly, then we can set a good message or send a good message to people that go to football to misbehave. If you go to football, go to support your team, go to watch the game. That, that's, that's, the, that's the purpose of football. It's supposed to be an entertainment sport. Well, Steve Clark firmly putting it on the authorities mm -hmm. to start taking action. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, I'm disappointed that uh, the Hibs carry-on hasn't come out. You know, I know that the police have arrested somebody and I know there's obviously procedures you've got to go through, but I want it in big writing. This boy's getting three or four years, uh, sorry, three or four months or whatever it is in jail. You know, if the English FA can act as quickly as what they did, I don't see why we shouldn't. And that's the only deterrent we've got. If people run about him, see like, well, look what he's got. You know, I better watch what I'm doing here. But we haven't seen it. It's just dragging on now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and of course, uh, I know Boyd is writing a column and he's playing football. Just hope he hasn't taken up boxing as well there. Steve Clark didn't look too good in that after <laughs> that oh, pre-match interview. I <laughs> wonder what's happened there, but get back to Boyd there. Uh, Ruffy just made a good point off camera there. Boyd is going to Ibrox tomorrow, so that'll be interesting to yeah. see um, the reaction. 
Well, absolutely. And Boyd is used to getting booed um, by the Rangers fans when he was playing in a Rangers <laughs> jersey. <laughs> so with that in mind, we've dealt with Dundee Celtic and Rangers Kilmarnock. We are going to turn our attention to the rest of the fixtures. <laughs> and of course, Monday to Friday, as ever, we always offer you the chance to win one of our PLZ team t-shirts in your favourite team's colours. Here's the winner of the quiz. I wonder if there's any benefit, Ruffy, for a five-day quiz. It gives you the chance to cheat, which is something I know that you like doing to get it right. Um, or is it Gordon? <laughs> 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 um, but nevertheless, uh, 1989, it was some year because that was in the uh, uh, the point where the AC Milan side, some people were at that point suggesting they were the greatest side to ever win the, the Champions League or at least up there with the Real Madrid's team of the 60s? Well, if you certainly looked at the players that they had in that team, uh, they were all top of their game, you know, all fantastic players and they, I think the majority <coughs> of them would have been in any maybe top 20 of players of all time, uh, at least four or five of them anyway, so... You know, they were a terrific side. Yeah, absolutely. And there was another restart there as well. A lovely picture of Morris Johnson signing for Rangers. Uh, it caused a real furore at the time. Um, uh, and obviously it raised so many other sectarian issues. Uh, good to see that we've moved on. Um, OK, uh, let's crack on then. <laughs> uh, let's go to the Hibs game because... Before we talk about on the field, off the field, Paul Heckingbottom's not happy. He doesn't think Stephen McLean should be calling Stephen Gerrard to apologise. That sets a, a dangerous precedent in his mind. Yeah, I've got to agree with him. Um, I, I don't. I didn't like to hear that. I think if the referee thinks he's made made a mistake, why not go and um, pull the manager after the game once they're showered and and obviously Gerrard's got his media duties to do after it. There's maybe 20, 30 minutes after the game they can pull him and say, look, listen, I made a mistake, but a phone call, I don't think that's right. Ruffy? Yeah, I just think he's left himself wide open, you know, when, and it could be uh, tomorrow somewhere if he makes a mistake, you know, fans being fans will latch on to that, you know, that's another one. You know, there's not how many mistakes you're going to make and unfortunately for the, the referee he's going to have to deal with it so I, I would have preferred it be kept in house you know between the two of them uh, mm -hmm. but that's another way it works in, in our game yeah Hibs against Motherwell Motherwell with a great win over Hamilton Ackies last week you know they're on this fabulous run with uh, Stephen Robinson some great wins along the way they've just really hit a bit of form with a mix of experience and youth I still think Hibs have changed completely from the Neil Lennon era. There's something missing, Ruffy. No, I think it's a new manager coming in now and he's obviously got different ideas of how they should be playing, what f formation and, and personnel as well. So, you know, I think with, uh, with him at home, I'm not taking in away from Motherwell, but Hamilton was, you know, not a, not a great game. I, I expect Hibs to win tomorrow just narrowly. Yeah. Um, Barry? I've been really impressed with Motherwell the last four or five weeks, watched them only in highlights right enough, but the young boys, since uh, the managers brought these young kids in, um, they've went to a different level, and I think Mono can go here and get a result. I just don't, I, I look at Habs and it's just not the same as the Neil Lennon team. Um, still the same players right enough, but the way Neil Lennon had them playing good football, but they had that wee bit of nastiness, edge, whatever you want to call it about them, and I, I think they're kind of lacking that just now. Yeah, if the uh, Aberdeen fans don't stand to a man, woman and child and give them <coughs> a massive uh, round of applause when they come out onto the park, uh, there's no justice, Ruffy, because I wonder what the crowd will be. Obviously, Livingston are yeah. not going to bring a lot of fans. The weather could play a part as well, might not even get the go-ahead, yeah. but uh, Aberdeen, uh, they should be on one heck of a high. Oh, you would think so. Uh, and not only that, but in the dressing room as well, you would expect the players to be on a high as well. Uh, and that, for me, means a win. You know, they, they can't, they can't after a tremendous performance of Rangers, go out in this game and, and, and expect nothing more than three points. Yeah, we've been down to Glasgow two games in four days, getting a point at Celtic Park. It's hard enough. And obviously dominating the, the, the quarter-final game, deservedly winning that. The only problem Dell will have is, is bringing them back down a wee bit. Um, but listen, he's an experienced manager. And as I say, the, the players' confidence must be sky high. Um, and I think they'll get the result. 
I can't quite work out what's happening with Tommy Wright. Um, I've got a lot of time for him. It, this is this has been <clears> one of those seasons where you, he has five or six, then he wins the <laughs> manager of the month, then he goes on a run here. No wins in nine against a St Mirren side, uh, Ruffy, that I know you were uh, falling off the couch in anger because Barry and myself picked up five points from that late yeah. Kelly winner against Saints. Yeah, it was a bit of a blow, uh, that result. But uh, I think Tommy Wright will get it. Get it right uh, tomorrow. Uh, I, I think they've, they've went long enough without a win. So I think they will get it tomorrow. At home, I, w- I would just say Natalie 2 1. Yeah, look, Tommy Wright's experience. He's come through a few sticky patches in his St Johnston career, and I think they'll get back to winning ways, uh, be winning the game. Okay, um, Hamilton Ackies against Hearts. Uh, I can't see at this moment. I'm looking at Ackies and I'm wondering if there's any fight in them. Brian Rice says he hasn't had a good record against Craig Levine as a player. Is he going to get one as a manager? Well, he never got a good result against Craig Levine because I was in that team as well. Uh, so I know exactly <laughs> what he's talking about. Uh, but I saw an offer of Hearts, you know, in, in midweek there that uh, they have certain players in the team can, that can win games for them. And I think they will be too strong. I think Hamilton, unfortunately, are starting to lose these silly goals again. And unless Brian can get that sorted out, I can only see a narrow Hearts win. Barry? Yeah, I think Hearts will have too much for them. Um, <clears throat> bad result for um, Hamilton last week against Muddle. He'll be looking for a, a response, Brian Rice, but I don't think he'll get uh, the right result. I think Hearts will win the game. OK, if you like the odd flutter, obviously everything in moderation. Um, Gabriel Antonazzi, our reporter, looks at the odds for this weekend. It's game week 30 in the Scottish Premiership with only four games until the all-important split. Aberdeen come into the weekend on the back of two excellent results in Glasgow, but they've only won one of their last eight home games. Will that change against Livingston? They're 8-13 for the home win. Hearts visit Hamilton Ackies following on from their Scottish Cup quarter-final victory and are beginning to realise that it could be a great season for them. Uche Ikpiatsu has been pivotal to that and he is 5-1 to one to open the scoring on Saturday. Hibernian hosts one of the informed teams in the country in Motherwell, with both teams more confident going forwards than defensively at the moment. I'll go for a score draw, which you can get at nearly 4-1. Rangers are playing Kilmarnock in a fixture that seems to happen every other week at the moment. Well, today is their sixth meeting of the season and there'll be one more after the split, of course. Much of the attention will surround the two managers and Kilmarnock player Jordan Jones. He's 7-1 to one to score any time against his future club, as he did in January. St Johnston are on a poor run of form, but will see this home game against the other Saints in the division as a great opportunity for three points. St Mirren themselves are also desperate for a win, but the home side could just edge it at a great price of 4-5. And finally on Sunday, Dundee, who are currently 11th in the table, take on the champions. Will Celtic's foot be off the gas, giving Jim McIntyre's men a chance? If you think so, then you should back them at 12-1. Yeah, there you have it. There's the odds. Some you'll agree with, some you'll disagree with. Um, of course, uh, we've been at it non-stop in the predictions. Uh, Barry's keen to try and catch me. Ruffy's keen to catch Barry because he knows there's an expensive night out at a restaurant when Barry knows his red and white wine, let me tell you. Um, there's the scores. Ho, 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 ho. Uh, Ruffy so far behind needs snookers. Barry still needs a good couple of weeks with uh, nine games to go. Barry could make a wee surge couple of weeks of getting it right and two yeah. or three games, Barry, and you'd be back in there yeah I just need a couple of good weeks two or three good weeks out of nine um, you having a couple of bad ones look I'm not giving up I'm still going I'm going for it Ruffy he can forget about it yeah um, absolutely he can save up now because he's sold the six jumpers he's been wearing uh, for the last <laughs> six weeks on the show to try and pay for the meal uh, what about the Champions League draw mouthwatering to say the least of course uh, the English clubs four of them in the draw this is how it all panned out Ajax against Juventus Liverpool Porto Tottenham against Manchester City and Barcelona against Manchester United and the way that will all pan out for the semi-finals the winner of Ajax Juventus plays the winner of Tottenham Man City and the winner of Liverpool Porto plays either Barcelona or Manchester United um, I don't know about you but in the quarterfinals I think Liverpool have got a great tie they've got the best tie <coughs> yeah, look Porto are a good team but if your Liverpool manager and players you'd have been absolute buzzing with that draw uh, they've got the, the best uh, draw of the quarterfinals I don't know about you Ruffy but I think everyone at UEFA is saying 
Wouldn't it be great if it was Cristiano Ronaldo against Lionel Messi? Would that would that resolve it all for you, Ruffy? Yeah, not for me. No, I'd, I'd, I would like to see another team uh, winning it apart for these two. You know, I think uh, I think Man City. I, 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 I'm thinking they might just go up a level now. You know, because I think that would be good. Not not good for the game, obviously, because yeah. obviously the other team, the way the money is and everything. But yeah. I, I just think a, a brand new side winning it would yeah. be good. Someone with mega millions. It's not yeah. really for the good of the game. I think yeah. that you've summed it up perfectly. Yeah. You're interested in anyone with the money. Barry and myself, obviously, are going for Juventus, who've spent a few quid as well. Yep. Uh, Ronaldo is in the mix. Will it be Ronaldo and Messi in the final? Or it could it be Liverpool uh, getting back there again? You just never know. Give us your thoughts on our social media, uh, on Facebook, on YouTube and Twitter as well. We'd love to hear from you. Don't forget uh, to download the app as well and give us your thoughts. Uh, enjoy your weekend's football if you get out to a match, if it is on indeed. Uh, from Ruffy, from Barry Ferguson and from myself, Peter Martin, we'll be doing it all again on Monday. Hopefully you'll join us then. Thanks for watching. Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com.